hope you're well. hope you're blessed. Since it is the season and everybody is celebrating the season, I wanted to remind everybody, if you did not know this, that the season and these holly days are all pagan. They all are pagan god worship. They are all anti-God. They are all anti-Yahuwah. They are all anti-Messiah. Everything here. We have a commandment, two commandments, that are expressly telling us that we should not walk in the ways of the, ma the nations. Let's begin here. And ye shall not walk in the manners of the nation, which I cast out before you, for they committed all these things, and therefore I abhorred them. The things that we are talking about that they did is they participated in pagan rituals. They mixed themselves with the world. They became one with the world. We are not to blend in. We are not to look like the world at all in any way, shape, or form. Now, <clears throat> let us go over the second verse. When you are come into the land which Yahuwah Eloheka gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. Deuteronomy 18, 9. When you learn the outside parts of the nations, when you are participating in what the world participates, it is a form of satanic witchcraft. It is a form of pagan god worship. You may think and you may say in your heart that you are just worshiping the birth of Messiah Jesus, <clears throat> which isn't his name. There were no J's in Hebrew. His name is Messiah Yahushua. There, it's like Joshua with a Y. The letter wasn't invented until the year 1524. So what do we make of this? Well, let's continue on. Let's learn a little bit more about this. Now, I would rarely ever go to the History Channel or the History.com for anything. And I think it's part of the History Channel. It looks like the same logo. But what you're looking at right here is you're looking at crazy festivities, right? You're looking at people that are probably not of sober minds. And you're looking at some sort of idols. And you're looking at all sorts of stuff. This is called Saturnalia. Saturnalia held in, in mid-December is an ancient Roman pagan festival honoring the agriculture god Saturn. Because of when the holiday occurred near the winter solstice, Saturnalia celebrations are the source of many of the traditions we now associate with Christmas, such as wreaths, candles, feasting, and gift giving. Right? All of those. Pagan. 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 If you are celebrating and you are doing pagan stuff, that makes you a pagan. You may be okay with this. It also makes you a Gentile. You should not be okay with this, but maybe you are. Let's continue on. What is Saturnalia? Saturnalia, the most popular holiday on the ancient Roman calendar, derived from old, older farming-related rituals of midwinter and the winter solstice, especially the practice of offering gifts or sacrifices to the gods during the winter sowing season. The pagan celebration of Saturn, the Roman god of agriculture and time, began as a single day, but by the late Republic, 133 to 31 BC, it had expanded to a week-long festival beginning December 17th. On the Julian calendar, which the Romans used at the time, the winter solstice fell on December 25th. Okay, the winter solstice. How the Romans celebrated Saturnalia. During Saturnalia, work and businesses came to a halt. Schools and courts of law closed, and the normal social patterns were suspended. People decorated their homes with wreaths and other greenery, and shed their traditional togas in favor of colorful clothes known as synthesis. Even enslaved people did not have to work during Saturnalia, but were allowed to participate in the festivities. In some cases, they sat at the head of the table while their masters served them. Instead of working, Romans spent Saturnalia gambling, singing, playing music, feasting, socializing, and giving each other gifts. Wax taper candles were called seri, were common gifts during Saturnalia to signify light returning after the solstice. On the last day of Saturnalia, celebrations known as Sig Ilaria, many Romans gave their friends and loved ones one, one small terracotta figures known as Sig Ilaria, <clears throat> which may have referred back to older celebrations involving human sacrifice. Hmm, the gift giving comes from human sacrifice. Saturnalia was by far the jolliest Roman holiday. The Roman poet Catullus 
famously described it as the best of times. So riotous were the festivities that the Roman author Plinly reportedly built a soundproof room so that he could work during the raucous celebrations. The Temple of Saturn and other Saturnalia customs. Constructed in the 4th century AD to replace an earlier temple, the Temple of Saturn in Rome served as a ceremonial center of later Saturnalia celebrations. On the first day of the festivities, a young pig often would be sacrificed, publicly sacrificed at the temple, which was located in the northwest corner of the Roman Forum. The cult statue of Saturn in the temple traditionally had woolen bonds tied around his feet, but during Saturnalia, these bonds were loosened to symbolize the god's liberation. In many Roman households, a mock king was chosen, the Saturniliaicus Prenniceps, or leader of Saturnia, sometimes also called the Lord of Misrule, usually a lowly, lowlier member of the household. This figure was responsible for making mischief during the celebrations, insulting guests, wearing crazy clothing, chasing women and girls, etc. The idea was that he ruled over chaos rather than the normal Roman order. The common holiday custom of hiding coins or other small objects and cakes is one of the many dating back to Saturnalia, as this was a method of choosing the mock king. How Saturnalia led to Christmas. Thanks to the Roman Empire's conquests in Britain and the rest of Europe from the 2nd century BC to the 4th century AD and their suppression of older seasonal rites practiced by the Celts and other groups, today's Western cultures derive many of their traditional celebrations of midwinter from Saturnalia. The Christian holiday of Christmas especially owes many of its traditions to the ancient Roman festival, including the time of year Christmas is celebrated. The Bible does not give a date for Jesus' birth. In fact, some theologians have concluded he was probably born in spring, as suggested by references to shepherds and sheep in the nativity story. Yes, September 11th, Yom Teror, that is when our Messiah was born. But by the 4th eighth century AD, Western Christian Churches settled on celebrating Christmas on December 25th, which allowed them to incorporate the holiday uh, with Saturnalia and other pagan midwinter traditions. Is Christmas a pagan holiday? Pagans and Christmas Christians all coexisted, though not always happily, during this period, and this likely represented an effort to conceive, convince, excuse me, the remaining pagan Romans to accept Christianity as Rome's official religion. Before the end of the 4th century, many of the traditions of Saturnalia included gift-giving, singing, lighting candles, feasting, and merrymaking had, had become absorbed by the traditions of Christmas as many of us know them today. So this is the source. This is where it came from. So is Christmas pagan? Absolutely. If you're celebrating it and you believe that you're celebrating it, and you're celebrating the birth of our Messiah, you are violating Deuteronomy 4.2. Deuteronomy 4.2 says we should not add or take away from the Torah. We have feasts. We have set apart times. We have times that we are to celebrate. We have Passover. We have Sukkot. We have many times that our Creator has told us to get together and to feast and to do things. And sometimes it's not a feast. Sometimes it's a fast. But if you are celebrating these outside of what our Creator tells us to, to, to celebrate, you are doing what the pagans do. This, the little gate that our Messiah talks about, the narrow gate, the thing that he says about it is that he says most people don't find it, and they're not able to find this. The narrow gate is not where people are having celebrations outside of our Creator's celebrations. All of these festivities, New Year's, Easter, Christmas, all of these things that are outside of our Creator are pagan. It's what the world does. It's what the Gentiles do. You don't want to be a Gentile. In Hebrews 8, when it talks about the renewed covenant, there is no house of Gentile. There's, it doesn't exist. There is not a house of Christian. There is not a house of Catholic. There is not a house of anything. There is a house of Yeshrael, the house of Israel, and the house of Yehuda, the house of Judah. You have two different houses of this renewed covenant that our Messiah's blood falls under and upon. And if you are not the house of Yashrael, then you are not walking with our Creator. How does one become the house of Yashrael? It's simple. You keep the laws, statutes, and commandments. 
that our Creator has said. There's not a lot of them. They're very few in comparison to the rest of the world. What do they do for you? They keep you alive. They will keep you in sync with your family. They will keep you in line with righteousness and holiness. They will show you the heart of our Creator. They will show you the mind of our Creator and His ways. And that His ways are good. And that we need to walk in line with the way He says because His ways are perfect. He says things that you talk about, don't drink the blood. Why would you want to go contrary to drinking the blood? So you want to be a rebel and you want to drink blood. Why? What's wrong with it? That's what the Satanists do. They drink the blood. They enjoy it. Do you want to be a straight on Satanist? If you are keeping these pagan holidays, then your life is not aligned with the Torah. Your life is not aligned with the way forward. The little sauced Christianity religion has no foundation when you read the scriptures. It talks, the Christianity says that it's once saved, always saved. That doesn't exist in scriptures. It says that we need to seek our creator with, with hearts of children, being humbled, being under his control, not being rebels. We need to fear our Elohim. We need to watch out for him. We need to guard his commandments. He doesn't say that once. He doesn't say guard my commandments twice. Or three times, or four times, or five, or six, or seven, or eight, or nine. He says it 53 times. He says it 53 times in the Old Testament that we have recorded. The biggest commandment that has supporting scriptures. 53 times he warns us to guard his commandments. Now before you say, Jason... Those commandments are for the old people. Those people are for the people that you call God's chosen people. You're right. It is for our creator's chosen people. If you choose him, he will choose you. If you choose eating pork, he's not going to choose you. If you're choosing worshiping on a day outside of the seventh day and the first day, which is a Sunday, is not a Sabbath day. If you're doing that stuff outside of our Creator's hand and our Creator's wishes, don't expect that our Creator is going to invite you into the kingdom that His Son is going to reign in. We need to be very obedient to the word of our Creator. Everybody wants to be free. Everybody thinks, oh, this is just some sort of bondage. This is a horrible thing. I will attest to you and I will tell you, there is no bondage to this. There is only life. There is only blessings. And you will find blessings. But you got to find the laws, statutes, and commands. If those commands are calling to you today, then go to the Yahoo and the Torah website. It's simple enough. And we have every commandment listed out there. You can go to the very top. I'm sorry for the blur. And if you click on the very top of Yahoo and the Torah... It will take you to a simplified list. Now the simplified list starts off with things like this. And it has amazing advice. If you want to reject the laws, statutes, and commands of our creator, you're rejecting the commandment to be fruitful. What, what is the opposite of being fruitful? Well, rotten fruit, not, being, not bearing fruit. We know that every tree that does not bear fruit has an axe at the base of it. It will be cut down and it will be burned. We're here to produce fruit. Should we not multiply? Should we take an abortion? Should we offer our children up on the, the tables of Moloch? Is that what we should do? That's not, that's not what it is. That's not multiplying. What about replenishing the earth? Should we fix the stuff that we destroy? Should we just chop down endless stuff or do we replenish it? What about men and women should build their own families? Is that bad advice? You know, for certain people, that's going to be bad advice. The people that can't have families, that don't want families, right? Right? Marriage was made with a man and a woman. Anything outside of that is an abomination. It goes against the laws, statutes, and commands of our Creator. Don't eat the blood. We talked about that. We're supposed, Here's the one from 53. 53 times, friends, to guard the laws, laws statutes, and commands of our Creator. 53 times. And before you say, the laws, statutes, and commands are on the cross, Jason. 
No, they're not. There's not one jot or one tittle of the Torah that will be gone until heaven and earth pass away. That is out of our Messiah's mouth. He says those who practice Torahlessness or iniquity will be told to depart from him. Our Messiah will tell people those words. Are you wanting to hear those words? Are you, have you, do you even care? If you don't care, that's okay. Move on. Enjoy your best life now. Because this is the best you're ever going to get. But for those who are protecting their soul and those who are seeking the kingdom, those who are seeking our creator, there's a path to walk and is lined with beautiful Torah commands, is lined with beautiful things that will enhance your life. It's the best I can do is show you guys the way forward. Much love to everybody out there. Run away. Run away from Saturnalia. Run away from Christmas. Run away from New Year's. Stay away from it, my friends. Keep yourself... Keep yourself pure. Keep yourself away from this world. I love y'all. I'm out.